We'll move to member's statement. Now recognize the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today marks Yom HaShoah, the solemn commemoration of the brutal murder and discrimination endured by the Jewish people during the Holocaust. Madam Speaker, almost every Jewish per person out there has a story of a family member who endured the Holocaust, including myself. There's a park that borders my riding, dedicated to a well-known Holocaust survivor, Felix Opatowski. And at 15, Felix risked his life and smuggled goods out of Nazi ghettos in exchange for food for his family. And after being deported to the Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp in 1943, he joined the Polish underground as a runner and later helped plan an attempt to demolish the camp's crematorium. Not long ago, I attended the premiere for the Legacy Portrait Project documentary, where Holocaust survivors spoke of their experiences with their grandchildren, and these conversations filmed in the documentary capture a moment in time, a glimpse into the individual triumph of each survivor, having prevailed over adversity by building families, finding love and joy after the Holocaust. Speaker, one in three students in Canada believe the Holocaust was fabricated or exaggerated, and 42% of students have explicitly seen an anti-Semitic incident in their school. I'm looking forward to September of this year when the new Holocaust curriculum will be officially launched in schools and over this province. Learning and listening to these stories of the Holocaust is crucial because those who fail... Thank you. Thank you for the 92nd member statement. The member for Niagara North. Niagara you, Speaker. Over 100 developmental service workers at Community Living Port Coburn Wayne Fleet, members of QP Local 2276, have been on strike since March 31st. These are some of the workers we so proudly called heroes during the pandemic who do the often invisible work of helping people with disabilities live full, rich lives. The main issue is a staffing crisis that has led to members being stuck on shift, sometimes for up to 36 hours. They just want to get back to the bargaining table to secure a fair deal, but this employer has indicated they're in no rush to do so. Untrained IT and admin workers are caring for residents, uh, including administering medication and managing complex needs. They've hired agency workers, and these unqualified scabs are being paid substantially more than the workers will. Chris Judge, one of the QP members I met on the picket line last week, says he's been stuck on shift so frequently he misses his children and hearing his kids upset or crying on the other end of the phone when he can't come home is absolutely heartbreaking. Judge and his co-workers aren't fighting for a raise, though they deserve one. They're fighting so their employer will respect them as complete people with families and lives. Their message? We don't do this to get rich, we do it because it's meaningful. But our employer uses that against us. They push us to our limits, they take advantage. People are made to feel guilty for wanting to go home at the end of a shift when all we want to do is do our jobs to the best of our ability and have a life outside of work. Speaker, I urge Community Living Port Coburn, Waynefleet, its board and management to get back to the bargaining. Now, negotiate a fair deal. Thank you. Still on 90 seconds, member statement. Uh, next member, the member for, for Sarnia Lenton. It's an honor to rise today to share with the legislature important news from my riding, Sarnia Lampton. I'm freezingly pleased to inform the members of this legislature about a recent announcement that will provide a much needed new funding to the Ontario government for the province's homeless prevention program and indigenous supportive housing program. The County of Lampton will see an increase of over $2 million bringing total homelessness prevention program funding for this municipality to more than $5.6 million. That represents an increase of over 57% over the previous year's funding. I had the opportunity to speak with Valerie Colasconti, the General Manager of Lambton County Social Services, about the importance of this critical new funding. Ms. Colasconti said the increased provincial investment would help Lambton County provide more support to keep people in their homes and also allow the county to do more long-term planning. The additional funding would be spent on initiatives such as helping those who live in shelters move into permanent homes. It could also help pay for mental health and harm reduction supports to keep uh, precariously housed individuals in their homes. And it could also provide rent, supp rent supplements to make rent more affordable. All of us in Sarnia Lampton are grateful for this important investment in our community. Thank you, Ma Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements.
the member for Kiwetanong. Uh, miigwech, uh, Speaker. Uh, good morning. This morning, I would like to share parts of uh, an open letter from Norman Shuwebik from Webuka First Nation. Quote, uh, on April 7, 2023, the home that my family uh, has been occupying since 1999 burnt to the ground. It housed eight of us in total, and yes, we had working smoke, uh, working smoke alarms. Luckily, we were all able to uh, self-rescue without injury before the fire spread. The house, is, the house was engulfed in flames within 20 minutes. We, we, all we had was a measly fire extinguisher. We lost everything. Last fall, another fire left families homeless because there are no fire services to call. In Webequid, there is no fire service. There is no enforceable fire codes, there is no fire truck and no fire station. While we live in poverty, the lands are being valued in the trillions and mining is being aggressively pushed to promote Canada and Ontario's future prosperity. It is preposterous that legislation like uh, the Ontario Mining Act is fully applicable on our lands but not the Ontario Fire Protection Act or Ontario Fire Code and that the governments have not already found a, uh, a way to work with First Nations uh, in, uh, in Ontario. There is so much to uh, Norm's letter, Norman's letter, but I, it's, I do not uh, have enough time to share all this morning, but it's an important letter. Miigwech for listening. Good. I recognize the member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, my favorite time of the year is the spring. I love the changing of the weather. I love uh, seeing the sun come out, all the snow melting, and obviously in Sault Ste. Marie, we do get our fair share of snow. But it's such a wonderful time of year, such an exciting time of year. And this past week, our constituency week, was just an absolutely glorious spring week in so many communities across the province. And Sault Ste. Marie was, was just outstanding. Uh, we had the snow melting, kids were all outside playing. I couldn't get my boys to come back inside uh, by, by the, by the mid middle of the day, Sunday, as the weather actually started to turn. Patios were open for business again. Things were, were outstanding. And this past week was a really great week in, uh, in Sault Ste. Marie with our brand new Northern Community Centre, which is a new twin pad hockey arena, which had just been opened up about a month ago. Uh, and already we've had a few tournaments hosted in this uh, new hockey arena that I'm really proud our government was able to uh, help with the construction of. And uh, it was a really special tournament we actually hosted this past week, Mr. Speaker, where our Sioux Junior Greyhounds under 15 Triple A uh, Northern Ontario Hockey League champs actually hosted the Ontario Hockey Federation U15 Triple A Ontario Championships. We had teams from across all of Ontario that traveled to the Sioux for this five day round robin tournament. We welcomed the York Simcoe Express, the Sudbury Nickel, Nickel Capitals, the Thunder Bay Kings, the Vaughan Kings, the Eldon Middlesex, Middlesex Canucks, and the Upper Canada Cyclones. Unfortunately, we fell short in the, in the finals, Mr. Speaker, but I'm really proud of the work our team put in, and I want to congratulate them on uh, their, their success. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa West, Nepia. Thank you, Speaker. Twelve days ago, an ice storm knocked out power in parts of Ottawa once again, including large parts of Ottawa West Nepean. For the second time in less than a year, the power was out for multiple days, with some residents waiting up to four days to have power restored. And once again, Speaker, residents in apartments and condo buildings were trapped in their own homes for multiple days, with no access to food, water or medical care. Lynn Ashdown, who uses a wheelchair and has now been trapped three times in her home for multiple days, was so struck by the trauma of the situation that she threw up as soon as the power went out. Residents of apartment buildings like the Minto-owned building at 1343 Meadowlands were once again reaching out to my office to plead for help as they were trapped without water and elevators. These residents cannot fathom why the government would not support legislation that could easily prevent situations like this from happening. It is absolutely shameful that the government is siding with big real estate investment trusts against people with disabilities, seniors, parents of small children, and others with mobility issues who are experiencing extreme hardship and trauma every time the power goes out. 
We need legislation to protect the safety and human rights of every Ontarian in an emergency. Shame on this government for making people like Lynn and the residents of 1343 Meadowlands suffer repeatedly. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, I, rise in this uh, I rise this morning to stand up for every resident of Brampton North or Ontario that drives a car, heats their home, or shops at a grocery store. It's on their behalf that I join my caucus colleagues in calling on the federal government to end their carbon tax. Speaker, for many families in my community, and this may come as a shock to downtown Toronto progressives, access to a car is a necessity, not a luxury. For families in my community and across Ontario, heating their home with natural gas is a necessity, not a luxury. Grocery shopping to feed their family is a necessity, not a luxury. Now, maybe some progressives will argue that those families could stockpile blankets to stay warm in the winter, or just shiver a lot. It would appear those same progressives suggest that those families simply fork out more money for their groceries. They'll call it doing our part, or they'll call it civic duty. I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker, I'll do my part by voting in favor of measures that cut taxes on gas, food, and other necessities. And it's a civic duty for every member of this House to stand up for Ontario families and demand the federal government scrap this ridiculous carbon tax. Thank you, Speaker. The member for Orléans. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Ontarians were recently blessed with a glimpse of what summer has in store. And while it didn't last as long as any of us would have liked, it's a very good reminder of what warmer days are just around the corner. Warm weather brings about a great deal of activity in our communities. Neighbours are gardening and spring cleaning. Cities are sweeping away the remnants of winter. And the coming of spring and summer also means more people moving about their communities. In Orleans last week, the roads and sidewalks were full of joggers and cyclists, dusting off the cobwebs of winter and getting some much needed exercise and vitamin D. Soon the parks will be open to welcome our children and more and more students will be walking or biking to school. With all of this activity, it's important that uh, we as motorists pay closer attention to our surroundings, that we remind ourselves to slow down through the neighborhood, become mindful of the ball bouncing down the driveway into the road. As much as we might try to teach them, children won't always be on their highest guard and know all of their surroundings, and it's incumbent upon us to be extra vigilant around them. Everyone should be encouraged to enjoy the outdoors and the wonderful opportunities spring and summer provides. Let's make sure everyone can stay safe while they do it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for flamborough Glanbrook. A few weeks ago, I was privileged to join members of Hamilton's police services on a ride-along. Unfortunately, many people in Hamilton are suffering from addictions issues, so I wasn't surprised that all but one of the calls we responded to that night involved a person under the influence of either drugs or alcohol. What did surprise me was the level of compassion displayed by police when they interact with these people. Here are a few examples. Police prevented a man who was dressed completely in dark clothing walking straight down the middle of a dimly lit street from being hit by a car. Police convinced him to go to a shelter and actually drove him there. He could have been killed that night and an unsuspecting driver's life forever changed. I watched as police along with paramedics de-escalated a family crisis involving a mother and troubled youth. The youth was eventually calmed and taken to hospital for treatment. And I witnessed wellness checks of our homeless population, police handing out canned goods to people who knew them by name. But I also saw the dangerous side of policing. At the beginning of the shift, I had taken a selfie with a young rookie cop I knew, Marco Arif. By the end of that shift, he was off to hospital with serious facial injuries that he received during an altercation on the job. I want to thank Constable Arif, Sergeant Scott Hamilton, and all of the women and men who work for Hamilton Police Services. Speaker, now more than ever, we need our police, and now more than ever, they need our support. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored to raise today to celebrate a strong community leader and a constituent in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park, Rosemar Enverga. Rosemar is a caring community leader, a force of nature who has inspired and touched the lives of many. Rosemar is a wife of the former Senator Tobias Enverga Jr. The Enverga family have been known for their leadership in the community and promoting Filipino art and culture while supporting the most vulnerable. In 2008, Rosemar co-founded Philippine Canadian Charitable Foundation with her late husband to support community initiatives including Pinoy Fiesta and Trade Show Toronto. The temporal, as Temporality's leader, Rosemar's dedication extends to Philippines where PCCF and the Archdiocese and Filip uh, Filipino Catholic Mission has provided over $600,000 in medical supplies to hospitals and help construct houses for those in need. These initiatives are rooted in their strong belief in family, community and faith. Rosemary is also a recipient of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal by the Governor General of Canada for her service in Canada and for the Filipino community. I want to congratulate Rosemary for her for continuing the legacy of her late husband and their lifelong commitment to charity. I'm truly proud to have Rosemary and her family in the Ontario legislature today. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.